Hi guys, this is Ms. Tomaszewski and I'm here with your summer school sixth grade ELA lesson number one. Um, our first lesson is for the play Damon and Pythias. And so Damon and Pythias, like I just said, is a play. So we're gonna review how to read a play a little bit better um, because it's probably been a minute since you've read one in class. So the first thing that you have to know about when we're reading a play is that you cannot skip the stage directions. So the stage directions in a play are those pieces that we see in italics, okay? So in our story, we see right here, it says sound, iron door opens and shuts, key and lock, music up, full and out. These are all stage directions. So anytime you see that italicized, um, and often it's in parentheses, pieces. Those are not meant to be said aloud during the play. They're meant to give us information about how to actually act out the play. When we are just reading the play, not actually acting it out, these pieces are so important because they tell us about our characters. In a typical story, we learn about our characters through their dialogue, what they say to other people, their actions, you know, that's obvious what they think, and then their emotions. And a lot of what they think and their emotions, we learn from those background pieces, you know, the, the description paragraphs, not from their actual speech patterns or their actions. In a play, we don't have that, okay? We don't have those background passages that, you know, go on for a couple pages to describe things and how the character is feeling or, you know, the passages where it's just telling us what's going on inside the character's head. So because of that, directors and writers, playwrights, give us stage directions. And stage directions help us fill in the blanks of what the character is thinking and feeling. All right? Because we need all four of those pieces to truly understand who a character is. So, for example, going back to our play, all right, um, in the first few lines of Damon, Damon and Pythias, we have a soldier saying, Ho oh, there, who are you that dares to speak so about our king? And Pythias is unafraid, I am called Pythias. All right, the fact that he's unafraid, we can make a note right away. He's not intimidated by the soldier, okay? And that tells us something about his character, who he is. Um, you know, a lot of people might be intimidated by a soldier coming up and, you know, confronting them about their behavior. So this makes him stand out as a character. All right, a little further down, when the king is introduced to us, we have the stage direction of hard and cruel. So right away, that tells us what kind of person he is, okay? And then two lines down further, we see that the king is angry, all right? So... From these pieces of information, without even having read the play, you guys should probably have at least a little background about what kind of character the king has. Okay, so when you go to actually read the play, I would like to see you making annotations. Annotations, although I know a lot of my students complain about them, annotations really help us maintain focus so if you don't know what note to write for a paragraph, you probably didn't read it and understand it that well. So that's a good note to you to go back and reread. Okay, they also help us when we have to answer questions to go back and find the important information, but only if we do it right. So when you're making annotations over a play, it's even maybe more difficult than a regular text. Keep in mind the plot diagram, all right? so. On the plot diagram, we start with the exposition, which we know includes our setting, our characters, etc. And then our conflict starts the rising action. So we should take note of our setting, okay, where, when, you know, maybe our who, okay. But then the big important piece is the conflict. So what's the problem in this story? Without a problem, we don't have a story. So make sure when you come across the problem, you take a note. The rising action is the development of that problem. So how does it get more complex or complicated? What adds on to it? Anytime something's adding to the problem or they're attempting to solve the problem, even if they fail, take a note. 
when we reach that turning point, make sure that you are taking a note. What is it that kind of lets you know how it's all going to end up? A lot of times our falling action, because we're reading such short pieces, there's very little of it. So if you can't find that, please don't stress. But do make sure you take a note of how the, how the whole story is resolved. What ends the story? Is it happy? Is it sad? Is it kind of purposely left hanging? What, what happened? My other advice to you about making annotations on this piece is keep it brief. You guys, we don't need you to rewrite this whole story. Okay, write four to five words in a section to give yourself a little heads up about what's happening during that piece. Okay, we'll talk more about annotations as we go through our lessons, but this is the end of your first lesson for Damon and Pythias. Um, go ahead, get started. You're going to read the story, annotate it. Make sure you pay attention to those stage directions for the play. And then you're going to answer the first 10 questions of the quiz. So there's 10 multiple choice questions to answer. When you're done with that, come back to the YouTube and you'll find your lesson two video there. Have a good day, guys, and good luck.